Hey guys, I'm back with another fantastic presentation. We're just gonna dive right in. Deep Core Tests and Fixes. Title of this post is PT in Cairo isn't working. What do I do? Right? So let's talk about it. Let's get into it. This is why PT Cairo, it's not working. Number one issue they are overlooking. Well, for the sake of argument, this is the number one issue. There's another issue, but that's for a different video. Okay, so deep core tests and fixes. Here we go. So what I want you to do, I want you to stand up right now. Get up. Okay, you see this image on the right. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to have at your house or outside or wherever you are, you're going to stop what you're doing. You're going to stand up. You're going to round over and you're going to try to pick something up off the ground. Something imaginary is fine. Okay, it can be an imaginary sock. Okay, yes, we're doing a brain workout. We got to work that imagination here for this test. Or you can pick up something light. You can pick up an actual sock. Now, put your finger in your belly button. Round over. Now tell me, does your belly button pull in, push out, or does your belly button not do anything at all? Okay, make sure you check both sides. You got to check both sides. Okay, if you have a hip hike, one side might pull in, one side might not. So that is the forward flexion activation test. If you fail, you are guaranteed to have an issue. Okay, if your belly does not pull in, to decompress your low back and tension something called the thoracolumbar fascia, then you will compress your discs and you will squeeze that little jelly right out of that donut and you will get what we call a herniated disc. So there's a muscle in your core that literally decompresses and pulls apart your vertebrae, taking pressure off of your discs. Okay. Cool. This is the number one issue that your therapist is not fixing if you're still struggling. Okay. This muscle takes 28 days to get pumping. Usually most people, they pass this test in about two weeks when or less when they are doing the right programming emphasis on right. A lot of PTs out there will give you exercises for this muscle, but they don't follow the right exercise parameters and therefore you do not get the result that you want they're, they're looking in the right spot but they ain't doing what they need to be doing to get you better okay well exactly what i just said if your belly does not pull in when you round your spine to pick up something off the floor it means that the primary muscle that decompresses your low back is non Functional, herniated disc, nerve root entrapment, inability to generate and absorb force, along with some other things, loss of postural alignment, etc. Result, you need to isolate this muscle with the four point tummy vacuum exercise to strengthen it and restore its function. This is how, this is the belly vacuum that you need. Four point position, blow out your air, keep a neutral spine. There's obviously some things that I can't go too in-depth on on a Facebook Live, but this is how you do the exercise. Keep a neutral spine. Make sure you don't tuck or tip, so don't flatten or arch excessively through the low back. Some of you will be naturally too flat in your low back. Some of you will naturally in your low back, and that tells us which muscles do need to be stretched. But you can see here, not too arched, not too flat. That's the best thing I can give you at this point in time. Okay, I have some other videos out there that talk about neutral spine a little bit more in-depth. But for the sake of brevity, that's where we're going to leave it. Because I could talk for hours. <laughs> for absolute hours on this. Now, so the way we execute the exercise, we kaggle. You know those muscles that you squeeze to stop, stop your pee midstream? That is a kaggle. Okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, drop a comment, send me a message. I'll make sure you get it. Okay? Because that's important if you're dealing with... A forward flexion activation test that does not fire, you got to fix your pelvic floor. If you had a C-section, you got to fix your pelvic floor. If you had a surgery to your abdominals, 
you got to fix your pelvic floor and your transversus abdominis muscle. Now, other points here while doing this exercise, making sure you're sucking the tongue to the roof of your mouth, gripping with your fingertips, feeling your chest muscles, curling your toes, specifically the outside four toes, and spinning the ankle apart. Again, those are nuances. If you know what I'm talking about, whoop de doop de doo because it's in the course uh, that I do, and it's, it's, it's the thing that really sets us apart so people actually get better, those little nuances like, what are my toes doing? What is my grip doing? Where is my tongue? Am I caggling? All these little things make the biggest difference. On top of that, the way you do this is you hold the air out, keggling and pulling your belly in for 10 full seconds or as close as you can to 10 seconds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set a timer for three and a half minutes, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. On the off phase, you're just relaxed, you're breathing normally. Exhale, keggle, pull in your belly blow out and then you can check oral posture grip toes tibial torsion on top of that but most important is kaggle belly in just so everybody's aware that's the most important thing in the exercise the other stuff is for people who need to take things up to the next level because they don't want to just sit in a chair for the rest of their life they want to actually use their body so if you actually want to use your body you do need to get your feet stronger you do need to get your grip stronger you do need to fix your tongue muscles you got to fix all those things, okay? Because it's not just your back that's screwed up. Your whole body is weak, and you got to fix it, okay? So, multifidus and prone. Oh, and we'll do three rounds of that. So, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, three rounds, one minute of rest between rounds. Each round takes three and a half minutes. Those are the acute exercise variables that have to be in place if you want to get a conditioning effect in this muscle if you are not doing that you will not get better if somebody's like oh here i'm gonna teach you to keggle i'm gonna teach you to pull on your belly but they're not giving you isolation exercises with those specific parameters to condition your type one muscle fibers it will not work you have to have that piece next thing part of the deep core the multifidus muscle these guys orient the vertebrae from segment to segment Okay, really important muscles, these guys, all right? Now, the way we check them is at each level, from L1 to S2, the way we're gonna start is on your belly. You're gonna take your hand, place it on these muscles at each segment. Use your fingertips to feel. You're gonna exhale forcefully, like you're blowing out birthday candles. Now, if at any segment, you don't feel these muscles swelling from L1 to S2. You got a problem. You got a deep core driver. You will never get better until you strengthen this muscle. And this muscle should be strengthened in a very specific fashion, integrating your transversus abdominis and pelvic floor. If you just isolate this muscle, no es bueno. This muscle should turn on when you kaggle, when you suck your tongue, or when you pull in your belly button. Okay, now how do we treat it with this exercise? You've seen people doing these in the gym. They're doing them wrong. Don't be like those people. Do them right. Here's the dowel rod. We mentioned neutral spine here. This is where we can talk a little bit more about it. See the space between the rod and the low back? Your, the fattest part of your hand, basically your thumb muscles, should barely be able to fit between the rod and L3, which is the apex of the lumbar curvature, which is on the other side of your belly button, L3. The top of the iliac crest is L4. Go look that up if you want to learn more about it. Now, next thing we gotta take a look at, making sure your spine is horizontal. If your head is dropping down off of that horizontal plane, it indicates you're flexing your abs using your six pack muscle. That is not the muscle we need to strengthen. Okay, you need to pull in and keggle. When you lift your right knee, just enough to slide a sheet of paper underneath it strengthens your left multifidus remember we must have all seven segments from l1 to s2 functional for you to be saying hey my deep core works you also have to have your transversus abdominis functional for you to say hey my deep core works okay it's part of the same system that has to be rehabbed properly. This is neuromuscular rehabilitation. If you do it wrong, you screw yourself up for life and end up in more surgeries until you fix it.
okay? So do not, if you have questions, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing right, send them over to me. I will help you. Send me your questions, okay? Parameters here are going to be uh, 10 reps per side. So 20 reps total, 10 second holds, one minute of rest between sets, three rounds, okay? Once you get good at horse stance vertical, this top image, you can go to horse stance horizontal, okay? I'm going to move on. There's more than I want to say, but I'm going to move on. Okay, keys for success in the horse stance series. This is like the internal cues that you need to be focusing on to actually get the result. You know all those people who do the exercise that looks like this in the gym, who I told you were doing it wrong and how not to be like those people? This is how you get better instead of doing the exercises and not getting better, okay? So number one, acute exercise variables, sets, reps, loads, tempos. We went over those. Next thing, internal cues. What are you focusing on while doing the exercise? Okay, now, lower abdominals should be drawn in. Pelvic floor should be tight. Outside toes should be curled on the stance leg. So the stance leg would be the foot that's on the ground, okay? So when you lift, when you're stancing on your left knee, for instance, you're your left low core specifically, you're curling your left four outside toes, you're working the mid thoracic muscles from T5 to T12, feeling those erector spinae muscles right here, right here, up and down the spine on midline, feeling the work in there from about T5, T6 to T12, which is about the middle of the shoulder blade to the bottom of the rib cage. You need to feel those muscles if you want to be able to walk and run, very important. Okay, so T-spine on stance arm. So you're feeling those muscles if your right arm is down on your right thoracic spine from the middle of your shoulder blade to your T12. Fantastic. Also, when you're reaching the arm or on the arm that you're lifting, really, you need to be working on feeling your latissimus dorsi muscle by gripping with the hand that is up. Okay, you should feel the chest muscle on the hand that is down by gripping. Notice it's the same cue, grip your hand into a fist to turn on your muscles, okay? Grip your fingertips into the ground, grip your hand into the fist on the lifted arm. Okay, very important. If you're missing any of this, you will not get better. Okay, so convex lumbar curvature on the extended hip. That just means there's gonna be a little itty bitty side bend, a little itty bitty hip hike, on whichever knee is on the ground. Totally normal. We want to see proper torsioning while moving through the hips. That is important. You should have a hip hike when you're standing on one leg. The other hip should be hiked. Okay? So, concave lumbar curvature on flex hip. Same exact thing. When you're looking at it from an aerial view, the leg that you're kicking straight back, that hip will be lower. That's 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 That should happen. Okay? Oral posture. Very important. Tongue touching. All of these individual cues, there are specific modules for in the course. So, you know, if you do want the plan that you need to get better, and you're like, man, I'm tired of the chiro, I'm tired of the PT, I want to get better, then book a call. Talk to me. We'll see if it's a good fit. If it is, I'll tell you about it. Next thing, if you pass deep core function, which in my career of 10 years has only happened once for somebody struggling with a bulging disc, if you pass it, then we'll look at the next thing which is lower abdominal strength and coordination. So if you pass, your belly pulls in, your multifidus fires, we go to the next thing, and that is lower abdominal coordination on the left and strength on the right. So coordination is keeping your back into your hand as you tap your feet to the ground. Now, if you do not pass deep core, do not bother with these because you'll jar don't bother with them because you're not going to pass. Okay? Okay. Now, and if you do pass, eh, give me a call because I'd be surprised. So, on the right, you see the lower abdominal strength test. The left is coordination. Now, if you don't pass coordination, don't do the strength test. You can't coordinate the muscles. Don't try. Okay? If you do pass, this is the exercise. So, you can do sets of 20 trying to get your legs straight, getting them to the floor while keeping your low back tucked in under your fingertips. You don't want to be too flat. You don't want to be too arched, but 
the way that we we cue a perfect true lumbar curve while doing this exercise is by using a biofeedback tool drop a line if you want to know more about the biofeedback tool that we use to make sure that your lumbar curvature stays neutral while strengthening your lower abs and hip flexors now 90 degrees is the start point you got to keep your back flat onto your fingertips hands will be under the low back flatten your back into your fingertips the feet to the floor if you can't make it all the way to the floor you don't have 100 percent strength okay you need to work on that you ain't gonna get better until you do all right so lower abdominals continued here we like to use a blood pressure cuff like i said for biofeedback core coach is available on amazon it's a quality product that's what i use it's what i have people use um, i'm not getting a kickback it's just a good product now if you have disc issues you must train strength into the nervous system with a neutral lumbar spinal curvature very very important so remember coordination first bent knees one foot at a time okay straighten the legs after you can do straight legs work on strength with two legs at a time progress to straight legs 10 to 20 rep range put a minute if you're doing strength minute and a half rest between sets if you're doing core minute rest to a minute and a half rest between sets build up to three to five rounds easy now if you pass lower abdominal strength and coordination well <laughs> you know what i'm saying you ain't gonna be watching this video because you don't pass all that i promise guaranteed or your money back now leg drive would be the next thing to work on in the world of of things that could occur because you know probability and such as that you can never be too sure i'm covering this because it would be the next step in the equation so that you get to be pain free you have to fix this this will be the next thing you fix deep core first then lower abs and then technically two arm pressing that's not covered in this because most therapists already know how to do that okay this is the stuff your therapists are not doing okay so leg drive and overhead overhead pressing we talked about back on the horse stance exercise this is actually an area you can use it in when you feel the right thoracic spine from t5 6 to t12 and you're kicking back the right leg you're working on the next step after the low abs which is the same side press and okay now when you kick the leg back the thigh bone should rotate in the tibia should rotate out which is your shin bone your thoracic erector and your pec on your stance arm should be activating and it comes from gripping your fingertips into the floor okay so one of the best ways to rehab that for people is horse stance horizontal make sure you're using your cues because if you're not you won't be able to walk and you'll get pain you'll never be able to walk until you get this stuff down you'll forever have pain you won't be able to stand stand for extended periods of time you won't be able to walk none of that because your pelvis and your spine are not torsioning like they should this is how you fix it okay so if you have worked on your leg drive your overhead pressing you did your lower abs your two arm press is good you've done your deep core then we can oh i didn't even have to go back look at that so this is for <laughs> this is for leg drive and overhead pressing here's the next slide again it's horse stance horizontal it's the easiest really controlled environment no spinal compression other than muscle contraction great exercise the cues matter if you don't have the cues you will not get better you won't it won't happen okay for this exercise we talked about it a moment ago 10 reps each side 10 seconds holds one minute of rest three rounds so keys for success again lower abdominal on the stance leg which is the leg that's on the ground outside toe grab on the leg that's on the ground t-spine on the arm that's on the ground grip to chest grip to lat make sure the pelvis is becoming oblique oral posture if you don't have if you're missing any of that you're screwed you got to have it all so after you fix your leg drive and your thoracic spine and your vertical press then hey man you're ready to get into and some lunging and some pull-ups and some deadlifting after that after you spend some time there you're ready to walk jog and run without pain but if you skip any any step in the sequence you will get worse you will not get better okay you will not get better 
unless you follow each step in order. Now, oh, that's the next part. So if you, if you do the above four without testing, so the above four squatting, lunging, pull-ups, and deadlifting, without testing functional in all the previous phases, you will tear your spine and your peripheral joints apart, okay? That's the fact, okay? The preceding exercise was will stabilize the anatomy sufficiently so you can produce and absorb force without the joints falling out of an optimal axis of rotation, okay? So there's a sequence to getting better. If you skip a step, you're screwed. So the journey, roadblock number one, you gotta do the right stretch. Number two, deep core and oral posture. Roadblock number three, the feet, the lower abs, and the hip flexors. Roadblock number four, high rep, two-arm pushing. Roadblock number five, force generation of the leg with mid-spine rotation sequencing. After you've been through that, you're ready to squat, pull, and bend, and lunge, and walk, and run, okay? That's the journey. Now, if you don't know how to put this together, first of all, you don't, so don't think that you do, and very few people do, so stop trying to look for other people, because you ain't gonna find people unless you <laughs> are uh, uh, like one of the luckiest people ever, because I looked, I personally looked, and I nobody was doing it, so I, I had to do it, you know what I mean, I had to, I had to figure it out, okay, and this is work, this is what works, okay, so you found somebody, if you follow this, you'll get better, very simple, I made an online course to develop every piece of your spinal engine with the same approach I've used in person to achieve results for the past 10 years in the clinic. It'll take disciplined action every day for about a half an hour for three to six weeks. But at the end, you'll have the pain-free and functional body that you have been hunting for for the long term. No surgeries, no drugs, no chiropractic, no massage required. If that sounds good to you, then probably put a comment below and when I send you a message, respond to it. I'll give you a little link. You can go check out some more stuff. And if you wanna talk about what it all looks like, you can book a little call there. Get on your call. We'll see what's going on with you. We'll talk a little bit. If this program can help you, I will tell you more about it, okay? There's no reason in today's world that you should be struggling with pain or be looking or getting any surgery, 95% of the time, at all, period. 